class today we're going to talk about foreign policy. Foreign policy is the uh, position we take when it comes to dealing with other countries. Uh, this is important to us because the United States wants uh, the world to work a certain way. We're interested in certain things uh, that involve countries overseas. We want certain things to happen. We want certain things in other countries to happen in a certain way so that we get the desired effect here at home. And for those reasons and many others, the United States stays very involved with world affairs and foreign policy. So we're talking about this now because it's really the president's responsibility to make foreign policy decisions. And the president does this for a variety of reasons. One, uh, and probably the most important, is that the president is viewed as our, as our singular leader. He's the, the representative head of our country. And for that reason, it's um, appropriate for him, or whoever the president might happen to be, to uh, do the uh, negotiations, the, the dealings, the um, interaction with other leaders in other countries. The president has quite a bit of responsibility and power when it comes to shaping foreign policy. What are some of the things the president and other parts of the government can do to influence foreign policy? Well, there's quite a number of tools that the president and other parts of the government have at their disposal. Think about the things that we do to um, influence other countries or to reach our goals uh, in other places around the planet. We might use the military for um, you know, forcing another country to do what we want them to do or protecting our interests in places overseas. Uh, another common tool that we use is money either providing other countries with money as a way to entice them into uh, helping us or agreeing to our goals or our wishes. The money that we would give to other countries is referred to as foreign aid. We could also cut other countries off from money or trade. This is referred to as economic sanctions. And this strategy might be used as an attempt to force another country to comply to what we want to do. And then the third uh, tool is just flat out diplomacy. This is uh, the president or other representatives of our government, of our country, sitting down, talking with, making agreements with leaders from other countries. The president has uh, a few key helpers in the bureaucracy that assist uh, with foreign policy and diplomacy. The biggest one being the State Department. If you think about the role of the Secretary of State, uh, they lead the State Department, and the State Department's main focus or main goal is to serve as the President's uh, Chief Foreign Policy Advisor. Uh, another component is the Foreign Service. This is part of the State Department that actually sends people to interact with other countries in the role of diplomats or ambassadors. Other components of the bureaucracy that help with foreign policy include some things that are more associated with defense. You have the National Security Council, which is a group of advisors that uh, keeps the president informed and advised on national security. And that includes military involvement overseas or protecting our country from danger or threats from, from other countries. The Department of Defense, of course, coordinates the military. And the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, is our primary uh, spy organization. They collect intelligence. Uh, intelligence is simply information on foreign countries, foreign governments, activities overseas, things that we feel like we need to know about in order to keep our country safe. Because the president exercises so much power over foreign policy, there are some key and important checks and balances that uh, factor in to foreign policy decisions. So the first one, probably the most important one, is think about how the president can be checked when it comes to waging war. When the Constitution, power to declare war, is given to Congress, the president cannot 
single-handedly declare war on another country. Another measure that Congress uh, exercises as a way to control the president's actions is that they control the money that's used to pay for the military, to pay for going to war. So Congress can use their control of our budget or our spending to curb the president's military actions. Remember that the Senate uh, has the power to confirm ambassadors, people that we actually send to other countries to represent us. And if the president ever makes a treaty with another country, it's the Senate that ratifies that treaty and makes it official. The courts have really the same style of, of check uh, that they have over really everything that the other branches of government do. They have the interpretation power where they can uh, examine treaties and uh, interpret them as to how they would apply and to determine uh, the constitutionality of those treaties. So our foreign policy has changed over the years and if you think back to learning about how the United States developed in your history class there's some there's some important clues and some important things to remember about how our country has developed its attitude toward dealing with the rest of the world. Think all the way back to the beginning of our history as an independent country. The United States was not really in a position to be very involved in world affairs so we pretty much stayed to ourselves. This attitude is called isolationism. The United States was an isolationist country, kept to itself, did not get involved in other affairs. And this was done for several reasons. One, we were not a strong country at that time. We had lots to do within our own borders to, to uh, direct our attention towards. Uh, so there really wasn't a lot of emphasis on dealing with, with foreign affairs or, or having a very strong foreign uh, policy or worldwide presence. This is best exemplified by the Monroe Doctrine. The 20th century, though, marks uh, a change in that attitude. The United States slowly grows into being a world power. We make a great impact on the world by our participation in things like World War I and World War II, and eventually into the Cold War, and establish the United States as one of the major powers uh, on the planet. So today, because we have uh, developed in that way over the course of our history, the United States uh, is very different than the way we were in our early days. We have a very strong and involved presence in the world and um, we do quite a bit to make sure that um, the United States stays involved in world affairs and that the, the activities in other countries are happening the way that suit us the best. Here you see um, a, a general but a little bit more specific list of the kind of things that we emphasize with our foreign policy today. First and foremost we want to protect United States interests overseas. Think about why we get involved in wars and conflicts in places like the Middle East. Well our interest in that part of the world has mainly to do with oil. Um, we also want to make sure that terrorism uh, is contained. The United States plays a big role in making sure that uh, human rights are protected in other countries and around the world. Uh, the Cold War has ended, but that does not mean that the threats of the Cold War have necessarily gone away. So a third goal um, might be our desire to keep nuclear and biological weapons that were very common during the Cold War from spreading or becoming more dangerous than they already are. We have alliances that date back to the Cold War that we maintain, like our participation in NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We attempt to combat drug trafficking and drug trade, keeping drugs from coming into our borders from other countries. And we uh, engage in efforts to protect the environment, uh, controlling pollution that is produced not only here in this country, but also in other developing countries like China and India. And uh, we also uh, carry on efforts to clean the oceans uh, and the atmosphere to make sure that our air and water is free of pollution. A few specific foreign policy uh, um, trade agreements that you need to be aware of, just in more specific terms, include NAFTA. That stands for the North American Free Trade Agreement. 
It's a free trade agreement between Canada, the United States, and Mexico that has redefined how we trade with other North American countries in the last 20 or 25 years. And then another specific that you need to be aware of is the WTO. It's the World Trade Organization. It administers trade agreements between countries, handles disputes to make commerce between countries all around the globe uh, more easy and more efficient.